No man, Tecmos here making another video. Again, not in a dungeon, uh, but as I uh, talked about a little in my last video, I was quite fed up with being not high level, and I'm just. <laughs> this isn't actually fast experience, so that's not really helping me there. But when I left Lower Guck, I decided I wanted to just grind out some simple XP, and um, I. Uh, I thought there was one in here. Sorry. I um, was going to go to Lake Paloma again, but then I decided that would be uh, too far of a trip, and I was not feeling like traveling over there. So when I ran into Grob to um, sell and bank and stuff, I thought, well, I wonder what level these guards are. I'll go read about them a little bit, and um, apparently they're kind of cool, actually. Um, I would say this is a great spot for somebody who's not, it's a first character on the server who's not twinked to come because literally every single one of these bashers drops a longsword that sells for almost 12 platinum, a shield that sells for one platinum, and a little necklace usually that drops or sells for two platinum. It's like 13 plat per kill, every single kill. Um, which is kind of nice uh, for a new player to be getting. You know, you can make a couple thousand platinum in a level in here, and you could probably be in here from like 40 all the way to 50, um, is my guess. I haven't seen any green cons yet at 47. Some of the stuff hits for 105. Not very many, though. Most of them hit for like between 70 and 75, 85. But, um, so yeah, I'm here in Grob killing guards and figured I've showed every other place that I've XP'd, I might as well do this one too. Uh, there's actually someone else in here. I saw a Necro in here who I assumed was going to kill stuff the other day. And, um, I see uh, the, this Emilio who's in here is a level 47 druid. So, I'm not uh, at the entrance to show you right from the start where I, I got started in here. I'm back farther into the zone where it's. Um, not competing with this druid, but if Amelia leaves before I'm done, or even if not, I'll I'll gate back to the entrance and show you where stuff spawns and how I work my way through the zone. There are a lot of bashers here. This carver is on the same faction as the bashers, and he has a little worse loot, but I feel like he gives me more XP. I don't know if... Like I, I mentioned, the XP in here is bad. Yeah, it's bad. Um, I get maybe two-thirds of the XP for each one of these as I do for Blood Gills. Um, even though these are probably the same level as the Blood Gills. The big difference is that these things have a lot of hit points. At least 2,000. Some of them have four or 5,000 hit points. Even though I don't think they're as high level as stuff that has that many hit points would normally be. And so it takes them a long time to beat each other down. Even though they apparently quad uh, even though they have a shield in their offhand, not a sword, they still squad fairly often, it looks like. Um, but, anyway, yeah, it, it's uh, not great XP in here. And I'm not sure if it's because the guards have like a specific change in the amount of XP they're worth, or if the whole zone just has like a an crazy low zone experience modifier for some reason, or what. But... Uh, I'm going to back these guys up a little farther because there's a path in that hallway there that I don't want to deal with. But yeah, the the levels are also pretty wide range. Like, this guy I've got right now is buff. He hits for 105. He's going to wreck these two. Like, he he would almost be able to solo them by himself if he were um, at full hit points when we started. Um, but, you know, at 13 plat per kill and as an enchanter, you can still use the merchants in here in troll form because the killing the NPCs only reduces your faction with the other guards and I think with the warriors I'm not sure it's only one faction I think the warriors are on the same one um, so you know as long as you're only killing those things oops don't want to kill that one first um, oh my god he just dropped that thing 30 percent in one melee round <laughs> there you go he can quad for 105 um, but yeah, you can still use the vendors here, 
and even if you don't feel like flirting around with the bank because there are two guards in the bank oh crap this is gonna I don't want it um, even if you don't want to mess around with guards in the bank you can still um shit bugger get myself distracted killing the wrong thing I'm just gonna let him kill both of them hold on a minute here while I this, this room gets a little messy because there's like three things that are hostile in the room and then there's two different things that wander through or can aggro into it and I can't use AoE stuns unless I want to risk um, aggroing all these merchants and one of these dudes over here is a shaman guild master too uh, but anyways pretty interesting zone um, killing guards making quite a bit of plat ruining a faction that nobody really cares about it's actually increasing the Ogok warrior faction which I thought was interesting I'm not going to use him right now I'm gonna, oh he just re-accroed me um, I'm going to blur him for now and sell and run around and show you some stuff and um, net up there's a bank here like I said you can use it it's a little tricky to use because of the two guards that are right there I don't know if the banker will assist you if the guard or assist the guards and come at you um, but yeah make some plat It'd be great especially for a newer player when at these levels you're not just focused on XP but you're actually interested in making some money too apparently my blur did not blur him this guy is if he's something that I can get killed with just one enemy. Anyway, I'll give him a go, I guess. Um, lots of them in here. You're never going to run out even with two people. I'd say there's probably 20 or more bashers around the whole zone, although some of them are pretty difficult to get at because of their proximity to things that will assist them, like the Shadow Knight Guildmasters. behind me respawns rapidly. The guards do not. The guards have like a 25 or so minute. I haven't even paid attention really. Uh, respawn. This little carver guy behind me is, is much shorter so I have to <coughs> excuse me. I have to look out for him because he'll pop back up and he's one of the fairly tough guys in here so I don't really want to get beat up by him unless I absolutely have to. There's just enough room in here to work, work with so that you're not getting beat on this stuff hasn't been resisting me at all. I don't know if it's because it's a little low level for me. I mean, it's hitting less than the Geonids. A lot of it hits le for less than the Geonids that I was killing seven levels ago. So I, I think some of this stuff might be just on the fringe of turning green. Uh, but some of it hits pretty hard and still doesn't really break charm that I've seen so far. Um, unfortunately... I feel like I'm going in circles a lot in this video, and sorry if my commenting is dumb. It's late, and I'm in a long day. Um, yeah, the XP is like maybe two-thirds of what you could get in another zone, although the loot is, is pretty significant, really, um, for these levels, especially for how safe it is and how convenient it is that you can bank and sell right in the zone. You can either... You can trade up to platinum really easily because... Um, you can just buy the long swords that you sell. They're not they're not fine steel long swords. They're long sword, and you can buy them back from the vendor for the same price that you sell them to, pretty much like ninety percent the same as an enchanter with high charisma. And then you know, so you can convert all your small coins into platinum by buying a couple swords back from a vendor and then selling them back again. And if you uh, or if you want to, there's quite a few of these merchants have gems on them. Um, this 
guy doesn't have any big ones. But yeah, quite a few of these guys have easy fire emeralds, gems that are worth a fair amount of money that you can um, buy up to hold value, your plat value, if you don't want to try and mess around with going into the bank, which I haven't tried to yet. I'll do, I'll do that at some point during my video. I'll see if I can get in there and bank safely, and then I'll see if I can kill the guards who are by the banker without causing problems for myself. I'm going to bit gate back towards the entrance now. If I can... Oops. Move out of the way before I aggro this guy. Gate back towards the entrance. I'll show you where the different spawns are back there. I'll loot up some more stuff and see if I can repeat my flying out of the water bug that I posted in the bug forums with a gif so that it's easier to see in the video. Almost 48. I said that... Is it just me or does it seem like gates tend to be unstable and collapse when you're surrounded by mobs? <laughs> you know, if you're out in the middle of like West Karana and nothing's attacking you and you decide you want to gate, it's like, sure, you can gate out of here. If you're in the bottom of a dungeon surrounded by a bunch of stuff, the mezzes of which are about to wear off, <laughs> you try to gate, gate's unstable, collapses. Maybe it's just confirmation bias. But, uh, yeah, here's Emilio back here. We've been trading buffs. He's been keeping my hit points up and healing me if I get too beat up, and I've been keeping him with clarity pretty good. Emilio, uh, we figured out, uh, he was just, um, I believe, teleporting to a druid ring and selling there, and then um, gating back here, and I assume he was bound here. But then we realized that he can use wolf form to use the merchants, so he can... Uh, sell at least to upgrade all of his coin to platinum and to sell all the gear and then he could also if he wanted to sneak his way into the merchants deeper in that have all the gems he'd still be able to do it there so you know this would be a nice spot for a number of solo or duos um, I believe there was another video I saw on YouTube uh, somebody went in here in a trio it was like a shaman a rogue and a bard or something like that um, I assume that they probably didn't get through all the bashers in the zone before they were respawning. I'm not sure. But, you know, solo duo, maybe even trio could XP in here and make some plat. And uh, it's safe as long as you're careful about where you're moving around. Because there are some NPCs that'll aggro you. The vast majority of mobs in the zone are either the guards, though, or merchants. And of course, merchants won't aggro you even if you don't have illusions like an enchanter does. And um, the guild masters who are hostile are more fewer and farther between, um, so you don't have to worry about them as much. Um, and the guards are what you're killing. So I would say you could solo in here with almost any class that can typically solo. I wouldn't want to come in here as like a solo monk or any melee that doesn't have a slower or that isn't fear kiting because. This stuff does um, it does do quite a bit of damage uh, and have a lot of hit points. There's even some somewhat buggy mobs that have like an excessive amount of hit points um, for their level, even though they just con blue and don't have special resists or anything. So let's see here. I'll show you where the different stuff spawns. I still don't remember the levels of all of them. You know, there's a pretty big difference between it. I can remember like the two that I think of off the top of my head that are level that hit for 105. Um, so you got a spawn that's right here, and one on this ledge here, and one right there. One that passed back and forth all the way up through this tunnel, one here, there's two in this room back here, but then like here's your first merchant, but then right here is also your first guild master that you have to worry about. There's a basher up on this hill that I've never killed because I worry about pulling him down near these guys. I've actually never wandered over this way because there's guild masters all over the place and they do it. Um, I'm not actually sure if they assist the bashers directly, but once you're kill on sight with those guild masters, um, the bashers will uh, get their assistance. Back here is the goofy high-level basher, who's like, 
He's not high level. He's cons blue. He only hits for like, I don't remember. He might have been another one that hits for 105. But he's got like 12,000 hit points or something. Um, it's like a, an excessive amount of, of hit points for something that's only that level. Definitely lots of stuff to kill in here. Another big pack of vendors here. Guard up top. The one that I mentioned that wanders past, packs, past here and all the way up through there. I think this is a little bar. I don't think there's any bashers in here, but I haven't really come in to check. Well, oh, I bet there is back here. No. So just some more merchants in here. This guy is one of the high level ones. Hits for 105. He wanders from there up in this way. I think this is the Warrior Guild. I haven't checked. Oh no, it might be the Shadow Knight. I definitely tried to pull this guy by sending a pet at him, and when I did, this guy came charging over and harm touched my pet. So I think that's a Shadow Knight Guildmaster, and that he does assist the bashers directly, even if you aren't kill on sight with that guy yet. So I gotta be I haven't killed stuff back here because I don't want to mess around with you know, there's enough stuff in the other areas. You don't have to worry about uh running out of mobs and flirting with disaster back here. That high level dude. I haven't died in here yet, which is kind of surprising <laughs> because I did get disconnected in troll form while I was um, sitting very close to a shaman guild leader uh, <laughs> earlier tonight trying to vendor. And it just disconnected me and I logged back in as a high elf, of course, and but I managed to strafe and run out of the way before the shaman aggroed. I don't know if it, I was far enough away that I was just fortunate or if um, or if perhaps uh, I got lucky between aggro ticks or what. I met, read up, met up the rest of the way here and then use Syntok to aggro a couple of guards. He's tough enough that he can almost kill two mobs at the same time if you stagger his... Oh, I bet if you let him Fire, focus fire on just one mob he would kill two of the other guards by himself I don't want that, I want full XP for everything so I um, and he's got so many hit points that I can't nuke him down if he's not nearly dead so I'll pull two things and have him beat them both down equally so that when uh, he eventually gets low down to like you know 20% or something lower hopefully I can break charm, finish him off, and then the other two dudes are both really low too, and I can either finish them off right away or just charm one for a little bit to have them whittle each other down a little farther and then finish them off. And then um, the only area that I've been in so far that I haven't shown you is over here. Or that I, well, I ran through it but didn't explain it. More merchants up in this area. A shaman NPC who's not kill on sight with me. Um, as a troll. Carver guy. There's two guards that spawn right here and right over here that I killed earlier. And there's one who paths up by this door. I don't think he comes out of this room, but he comes close enough that he'll assist things. And then this is the, I believe, the Shadow Knight Guild. Maybe. Two GMs. I'm not sure if you can pull those two from up there or if these guild masters will assist. Well, I'll, leave, I'll stay targeted on one of them to see if it cons KOS when I click off and viz. Back in this hallway, there's two more bashers, and then up in here is the bank. Basher, banker, basher. And this just loops around. There's actually a safe spot back here. I think you can sit right here safely. And nothing can see you. Okay, so those dudes in there, they might be, I don't know if they're shaman or what. We'll find out. Maybe I'll have to experiment and see if, um, now it is a shaman. This Kaglari, according to the P99 wiki, is a shaman. Oh, and I clicked on Kagrek on accident when I was trying to click back into the window, so I couldn't switched my last target. Maybe I'll go in there and try to kill those guys too and show you that you can fight right on top of a shaman <laughs> guild master and as long as your troll form doesn't wear off while you're standing there you'll be okay. I 
I like using Kagrek to kill stuff because even though it feels like he doesn't, or he gives, he has worse loot, but it feels like he gives more experience, and I like that, obviously. Um, I better use Calm just to hope I don't actually aggro him. I'm gonna pull these guys out of here. The two bouncers, bashers, whatever. Gain Ogok faction, killing stuff in here. I don't remember if I mentioned that. Kind of amusing. Bakers are. Well, they might be level 45. I can't remember if it's 40 or 45, but I shouldn't have trouble getting in calmed, I don't think. And then. Go get him. But he's gonna come solo. I don't know why this door. Oh, it didn't open. daring with my running around and stuff before I get stuff toshed and rooted because I've had such good luck with charms lasting a very long time in here. I don't know, like I said, I don't know if this stuff just has low magic resist or if they're quite low level and I don't realize it, but um, I haven't, you know, I have a charm break here or there early, but a lot of them last forever and ever and ever. Sometimes it's a little tricky to keep the pets beating on different targets so that they're pretty even on hit points when I finish off the one and then need to charm a new one. But uh, yeah, just a little bit of micromanagement is not too much to deal with usually. Give myself some distance to finish off the carver. I had this guy rooted. A little tricky killing stuff, dealing with stuff since I can't AoE stun to quickly <laughs> that gets some mess, but it's not bad. You can move a little bit and get to a spot where you can stun without the merchants being in the way. Congrats me on level 48. I told myself I was going to leave here at 48. Brain Freeze suggested that I try to charm Ravishing Dolvargs, which are like level 43 or 44 dogs in Dreadlands who have a lot of hit points for their level, and try to use them to just slaughter, like give them weapons, haste them, and just let them slaughter the lower level stuff. And I would only be getting partial XP for everything because my pets would be stealing XP. But um, he says that they kill everything so quickly that it's worth getting partial XP for everything. I told myself I'd go over there and give that a shot, but um, yeah, I kind of got in a groove here and you know, looking forward to making 49 without having to do any more travel. I might just uh, might just do that, make 49 here, pick up new spells, and then go try the Dreadlands thing and see how much stuff out there is still green, or is still blue. Probably once I hit 51, I'll go to Howling Stones. I don't have the piece from the guy in Lake of Illumin yet, but that shouldn't be a problem to pick up quickly. And then uh, start fighting and... Well, maybe. The basement of Howling Stones would be nice because then I could use Theft of Thought and everything. But, uh... It's quite a bit trickier than the entrance area because there's necromancers in the basement. I finally get to bank. It's been a while. Now I got all these gems. I guess I could go sell them, huh? Well, this was dumb. I'm just going to go here to sell them anyways. I'm not sure if I can... I would kind of like to sell them to an NPC that's not loaded with stuff so that I can buy them back in the future. But I'm 
kind of thinking all these. Unless I find a merchant tucked back in here. Maybe he doesn't have all of a... Man, wasn't there just a reset of the server fairly recently, too? I can't believe how many vendors are fully loaded with stuff uh, in light of that. Boy, even this one has a lot of stuff. Um, I'll try my luck with this one. I'll try to clear her out. did it. So the for people anyone who doesn't know, not that this is exactly a fun solo enchanter video, but it is something that I do quite a bit of um, for the purposes of like recharging uh, items and stuff. Um, vendors only have a set number of they only have so many items in their inventory. Um, you know it's just whatever they normally start with plus whatever people sold to them. So if you find a merchant a vendor that hasn't been sold to a lot, you can sell stuff to them and then buy it back, which is how people, they sell a charged item, then they sell uncharged items, and then buy everything back, and you end up with items being recharged. Works with stuff like potions, which were courtesy of Brain Freeze. Um, but you can also, like, if you accidentally sell an item to a merchant, or if you're trying to find um, like research words, you can find you can you can buy out all these like random cheap things that there's only a few of on a vendor to dig through the hidden inventory that's on this dude. Um, now, if this were a PvP server and I were streaming something like this, I'd come back. I thought I was buying Paradise. I would come back. Oh, see, but I'm not going to be able to... Oh, God, I'm a fucking re retard. So this is a jewel crafting merchant, and so it already has expensive and unlimited number of gems that I can buy and sell to it. So I demonstrated how to clear out a merchant fruitlessly because I can accomplish what I was after here anyways without doing it. So I can use this NPC as a little bank, pretty much. I can, I'm going to go bank this plat, but, um, you know, as I accumulate platinum in here, lost my troll illusion, as I accumulate platinum in here, I can just come to the, this merchant and buy rubies to store a lot of weight worth of platinum in practically zero weight worth of rubies, you know. Anyways, now that I got that out of the way, I'll go uh, throw my plat in the bank and continue killing, slowly creep my way towards 49. still back there, so I'm not going to go kill by the entrance anymore. It's a little... Uh, I'd say it's a little less effort fighting back near the entrance because there's um, some more space between most of the monsters, <laughs> monsters, most of the guards, and you don't have as many merchants in the way that you have to, other things in the way that you have to be careful about stunning or else you uh, get 
it's everything upsetting you. But not a big deal. Like I said, there's at least 20 guards here, so... Plenty for everybody, as long as everybody is, is two. I'm about up to full, and I'll try to do one big fight in this room, and then I'll probably call it good for the video, so that I'm not boring you with any more of my dumb ideas about showing you how I can carry gems instead of platinum, so I'm not overweight and clearing out a merchant that was unnecessary, and that kind of stuff. That 1300 plat that I had was... I would say I probably made... 1500 platinum over the course of level 47. And it probably took me between 4 and 5 hours to get through the level. XP is not fast. Maybe, maybe it was only 4, but somewhere between 4 and 5 hours to make 47, uh, get through 47 and made 1500 plat in the process. So, um, it's not a lot of plat and it's not fast XP, but it's could be pretty important for a person starting a first-time caster on this server. You know, Enchanter and Necro, Druid, maybe a Mage if you're really careful with your pulls. Um, duos, Trios. You can make enough money in here that it might actually be worth your while to, uh, to do it even if the XP is a little slower. <laughs> And it's kind of a nice spot. I'd never actually been in Grob, like, <laughs> almost like at all. Um, even just for banking and selling, I'd almost never been in this zone. So it was interesting to see my way around it, learn the little layout. It's a it's a pretty cool little city, I guess, even though it's just a you know a little swamp. <laughs> appreciate my solitude after all, so, um, always happy to find an out-of-the-way spot to XP, that's, that's nice. I really wish I knew, oh, there we go, I was right, stuff was nearly green, so, uh, that explains why you know, charm lasts forever on almost all this stuff because a lot of it was um, only like level 35 or 36. But, you know, able to get to 48 here easily and uh, probably 49 pretty easily too. I wouldn't want to stay until 50, I don't think. Uh, I assume you'd probably be running into maybe even half this stuff would be a green con if you tried to stay here until level 50. Off that 63 that I saw a few times was a max hit or not. If that was a max hit, then a lot of the then there won't be very many in this zone that have greened out. I don't see very many things. Oh, oh poop. Poop. I think I can get off and get away with that. I'm getting bad with my roots apparently. I thought I had rooted that. Uh, I thought I had rooted both of them, but I guess I missed one of them. I rooted the same one twice or something. I'm going to tosh this guy. Root, root the other one. Oh, I was... Oh, shit. Now I'm too close to the... 
What the hell? I'm having a hard time channeling here. Well, anyways, could have died there if the other path would have come through. Would have been, been the enemy. things if I fire off a rune four, so I'll just do a three and hope that I um, don't get myself my face kicked in any much more. There's one of the buff ones. He's low. Hits for 105. I don't want to pull him without my pet three to go after him or else I'm going to um, get beat up. My pet's rooted. I thought Avisk was one of the high ones. Maybe they can spawn as a level range. Oh no, my pet's one of the high ones. Oof. I'm gonna have to kill like three things with him before he's gonna be able to <laughs> be low enough for me to finish off. I'll go charm the, uh, the goofy NPC by the entrance that's got a boatload of hit points and use him to just slaughter my way through stuff for fun in a little bit maybe just for the sake of seeing how many hit points he has. something that can quad for 105 can get through a 230 hit point rune in a hurry. Not to mention my remaining 500 hit points. So stuff that hits for max hit 73 is green to me. Not sure what exactly level that is. I think that's 30, 36, maybe 35. I'm going to have to try and stun my pet after a melee round. I don't have enough room to root him. Oh, I guess maybe I do. No, there's a path over that way. I'm going to stun him after he has a round of melee hope that I get it off before he, without him bashing me or anything, so I don't get hurt. I'm not going to be able to finish this guy off without mitting. Ooh, 
Ooh, it's almost my birthday. Uh oh. <laughs> I don't think I can sit down now with what's his name sitting down in there. I don't know, maybe I can do it. I'll try to. Okay, buys me a second, anyways. Um, <coughs> the character's almost a year old. <coughs> I'm just going to keep metting for a minute here because that Sintok guy who just wandered past is, he's another one of the ones that is high level. Um, so I don't want to start a fight with him when I'm almost doomed, but I still want to finish this guy off, so I think he's going to take two discordant mines, and I don't have quite enough mana for that, especially if he wanders a little farther down and aggro's another mob that I have to mez and deal with. Looks like I might be aggroing the next one. Happy to deal with him though, because Syntax is going to wander back here before my current pet's dead. You calm. You know, if Syntok paths right over top of this guy, he'll still probably aggro me. But, uh, Calm does reduce aggro radius by, by quite a bit. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so I'm going to get back to the entrance and met up, call this video good. Because uh, I don't feel like sitting around on the video for as long as it would take me to met up and then go at this again. And I don't have the, uh, motivation to learn how to edit out part of my video that's in the middle of it so that you don't have to watch me metting up. Maybe I'll make a point of learning how to do that in the near future. Uh, thanks for watching. And I, Like I said, I know it's not a dungeon, but still a pretty nice spot to show off, I think. Uh, very quiet. Pretty interesting. I thought, anyways. Long and interesting enough that I've been unable to tear myself away from here, even though the XP is pretty mediocre. Um, I'll try my Dreadland spot next. That's been recommended, and see if I can get 51 out there. And then uh, get back into dungeons for real, all the way, rest of the way to the 60, probably. I can't imagine I'd be killing anything except. Um, inside dungeons once I hit 51. Talk to you guys later.